Some E2 reactions are stereospecific. This is not the same as stereoselective. The stereoselective reaction, which I covered in the last video, just tells us that the E2 reaction prefers to form the trans product over the cis product, although both, both products are formed. Stereospecific is when an E2 reaction forms the E product or forms the Z product. This is not a major or minor thing like with the cis and trans stereo, uh, stereo selectivity. This is stereo specificity, meaning that it makes one of these isomers, but not both. So we're going to look at two examples of stereo specificity. Here is our first one. And like with all E2 reactions, the first thing that we should always do is identify the carbon that has the leaving group and the carbons that are adjacent to, to it. We also need to identify any hydrogens that are available on the adjacent carbons. These are all hydrogens that could be removed in the reaction. Now we have something a little bit different with this reaction than with the previous examples, and that is that we have stereochemistry. So when I was drawing the hydrogens in on this carbon, I didn't draw them with wedge or dash because this particular carbon atom is achiral. But on this carbon atom, because it's chiral, and I know it's chiral um, in part because it has four different things on it, but also because this dash bond was already showing. So when I added the hydrogen to this carbon, I added it as a wedge because that is what its stereochemistry would be. So stereo select, stereo specificity comes into play when we are abstracting a hydrogen and a leaving group from two carbons, both of them are chiral. So elimination that would take place in this particular site between two chiral carbons would be stereospecific elimination. Any elimination that takes place between one chiral and one achiral carbon or two achiral carbons, that is not a stereospecific reaction. So let's actually start by drawing the elimination on this side of the molecule with one of these hydrogens because it will be more straightforward because it is not stereospecific. So we will just grab one of those hydrogens, the carbon-hydrogen electrons come down to make the carbon-carbon double bond and the chlorine is removed and the product that we make from this reaction looks like this. Now we don't do anything with the stereochemistry of the carbon atom that we did not touch. Nothing happened over there, so don't change its stereochemistry. Um, and here is, here is the product. Now remember, whenever you make a product like this, you always should be asking yourself, is there a cis and trans situation going on? And can I draw this molecule um, if it is the trans isomer, which this one is, can I draw it in the cis isomer? And yes, you can. So we've got two products that are formed by removing one of these hydrogens out here. And of these two, this is our major product because the trans isomer is always the major of these two. So what about um, from ab abstracting the other hydrogen, this hydrogen right here? Now this one we have to be a little bit more careful about. In terms of just looking at the curved arrows for that part, it's still going to be the same thing. We still have the hydroxide, the base, grabbing that hydrogen. The carbon-hydrogen electrons move in to form the double bond, and the leaving group is abstracted. So in that regard, it's exactly the same. But when it comes time to draw the products of this particular E2 reaction, we can't just draw them out like we've done in the past because we have affected two chiral carbon atoms. So before we draw these products out, we have to really take a look at how the substituents on these two car car chiral carbon atoms are arranged relative to each other. And the only way that we can do that is with a Newman projection. So we are going to draw a Newman projection by citing down the relevant bond. We want to cite 
down the bond that is going to become the carbon-carbon double bond. Remember when we draw a Newman projection, the front carbon is represented by a dot. This is my front carbon. The front carbon has an ethyl group sticking straight up. I'm going to draw it like that. It has front carbon has a chlorine that is when we're looking at it from this perspective that chlorine is going to be on our right so the chlorine is right here and the other bond that is not being shown in the line structure is a dashed hydrogen which is going to be to our left now the back carbon right here is this carbon right here it has an ethyl group that is pointing down, so like that. And then it has, when we're looking at it from this perspective, it has a hydrogen that is going to be up to the right. So the hydrogen will be right there. And it has over here a methyl group. Now remember, you can build models to help you visualize the, um, the Newman projection. It'll maybe make it easier and faster for you. So this is the Newman projection for this molecule right here. And when we are focusing on the um, parts of the molecule that are leaving, we're going to be abstracting this hydrogen back here and this chlorine right there. So as it turns out, when we do the E2 mechanism, the alignment of the hydrogen and the leaving group are really essential. This parallels what we know about the SN2 reaction. So when we do the SN2 reaction, remember that when we bring in the nucleophile, the nucleophile has to come in exactly opposite from the leaving group in order for a reaction to take place. Much like that, the hydrogen and the leaving group have to be exactly opposite of each other in order for an E2 reaction to successfully take place. So what we need to do with this Newman projection is redraw it rotating around this carbon-carbon bond. So rotate the bond here, which means we're going to be moving the substituents on the front carbon or the back carbon. Rotate around um, the carbon-carbon bond so that the leaving group and the hydrogen are exactly opposite each other. And so what I'm going to do to do this rotation, I'm going to move the chlorine over into this spot. I'm going to move the hydrogen into this position and the ethyl group into this position. And we've practiced doing this rotation before. So if it's rusty, you can go back to the videos where we learned about Newman projections because that is where we practiced doing rotations on the Newman projections. And so all that I've done is moved every substituent. Actually, when we practiced this, it was when we were doing the conformations of butane, the conformations of propane. Um, okay, so we all that I've done is moved all of the substituents on the front carbon by, uh, what is that, 120 degrees clockwise. So everything's been moved. And now, we have the hydrogen that we're abstracting and the leaving group that is leaving in the correct orientation relative to each other. So they're directly opposite each other. We refer to this orientation as anti, which should make sense to you from what you know about conformations, anti versus gauche versus staggered versus eclipsed. We call it anti-coplanar. So the anti means that, as you know, it means that they're opposite each other. And coplanar means that they are in the same plane. So they're laying flat with respect to each other. This would not be a coplanar orientation. This would not be a coplanar orientation. It's just anti and coplanar, they really kind of mean the same thing. So once we get these two substituents, anti and coplanar, and we can see that this is how the elimination will occur, what we're actually going to be doing is eliminating the chlorine and eliminating the hydrogen when, they are, when the molecule is in this conformation, which means that after the elimination is done, these two groups will be on the same side as of the double bond, and these two groups will be on the same side of the double bond. Let me try to explain that a little differently. When the double bond is formed, the double bond is, we can kind of think of it as going into this place right here. The double bond is going to occur here. These two groups will end up on the same side 
of the double bond. And these two groups will end up also on the same side of the double bond. So this can be a little bit tricky to draw. And for me, I find it easier to just start by drawing the carbon-carbon double bond and getting the molecule ready. So I'm not drawing it in line structure like normal. I'm going to just pick either this side or this side to work with first. I'll go ahead and pick this side right here. I'm going to put the methyl group and the hydrogen. It doesn't matter if I put the methyl group on this carbon or this carbon. What is important is that I put the methyl and the hydrogen cis to each other, so on the same side. And also not, they can't be on the same carbon because look at the methyl group is on the back carbon while the hydrogen is on the front carbon. So I've got the methyl group and the hydrogen cis to each other, and now I'm going to draw the two ethyl groups cis to each other. And this is the structure that we make. Now if we want to classify this, we can classify this as E versus Z by prioritizing the two substituents on the left-hand carbon. When we do that, this is priority number one. Prioritize the two substituents on the right-hand carbon. This is priority number one. Those two substituents are on the same side of the double bond, so this is the Z isomer. This is very tricky, so we definitely should practice this some more. Here's another example. So um, we're going to start by identifying leaving group. This molecule actually has two leaving groups. Fortunately, the two leaving groups are on the same carbon right there. And these are the two carbons that are available for abstraction. So the hydrogens that are on these carbons, either one of them could be abstracted. Now because this carbon is chiral, when I drew the hydrogen in, I drew it with the correct stereochemistry. So we can do elimination between these two carbons. Because this carbon is achiral, this is just going to be a regular elimination reaction. We don't have to worry about stereospecificity. When we're doing elimination between two achiral carbons, we don't have to worry about stereospecificity. Or when one of them is achiral and one of them is chiral, we also don't have to worry about stereospecificity. So let's start with that one because it will be easier. Use the hydroxide, the base, to grab the hydrogen move the hydrogen carbon electrons in to form the double bond, and then get rid of a leaving group. Which one do you want to get rid of? We've got two. Let's get rid of the bromine. It's a slightly better leaving group than the chlorine, but let's actually do both possibilities. So we're going to draw a lot of different products here. So here is the product that we would form if we eliminated the bromine. Now, notice that the chlorine, which was on the dash, lost its stereochemistry. That's because this carbon right here is no longer chiral. It only has three bonds. Three bonds to a carbon means that it is not chiral. So don't draw a dash here because it doesn't make sense. That's not a chiral carbon. What about if instead of eliminating the bromine, I'll just erase that arrow, we eliminated the chlorine instead. That one's not as likely but it is still possible. And there would be that product. Um, whenever we draw these, we should always look at our double bond and ask ourselves, is there a possibility for cis versus trans? We know there's a possibility for cis versus trans if, for example, we could classify this as either cis or trans. And we can't because the two methyl groups means that this Double bond is not cis or trans. So these are the only two products that we form when we eliminate this hydrogen. So now let's go ahead. I'm going to um, erase these arrows. Let's go ahead and eliminate the other hydrogen. So that is going to be using the hydroxide to grab this hydrogen, move those electrons in to form the double bond, and we'll eliminate bromine again. Because we are doing elimination between two chiral carbons, so let's make a note of that. If we are doing elimination between two chiral carbons, that means that we need to draw a Newman projection every time 
so that we can get the hydrogen and the leaving group into an anticoplanar configuration. The Newman projection is going to come from siding down the relevant bond. So we want to look at the molecule from this angle right here, or you could be looking at it from this perspective as long as you're siding down that bond. And so the first carbon that I'm going to be drawing is this carbon right here. It has an isopropyl group sticking straight up. It has, uh, when we're looking at it from this perspective, the bromine is to the right and the chlorine is to the left. So bromine here, chlorine here. And then for the back carbon, which is this carbon right here, we have an ethyl group sticking down. We have a hydrogen. This hydrogen is to the right and the methyl group is to the left. So hydrogen to the right, methyl group to the left. So in the way that we've drawn it, the hydrogen and the chlorine are already anticoplanar to each other. So let's go ahead and we'll draw that line. This is going to be the elimination. And when elimination happens in that site, these two groups are going to be cis to each other or they are going to be on the same side of the double bond. And these two groups will be cis to each other as well. So they will also be on the same side of the double bond. Let's draw our carbon-carbon double bond. We will start by drawing the methyl and the isopropyl group, one on each carbon. So one carbon gets the methyl, one carbon gets the isopropyl group. I put them on the same side, not one here, one here. They're on the same side. Now we're going to draw the ethyl and the bromine. We've got to be a little bit careful. Where does the bromine go? Which carbon gets the bromine? Let's go back to our Newman projection and let's look at the bromine is on the front carbon. The isopropyl group is on that same carbon. So the bromine and the isopropyl group are on the same carbon, and the ethyl group is on the other carbon. And here is one of our products. What if we were doing the elimination with the bromine instead of with the chlorine? Would that even be possible? Uh, it totally would be possible. Let me shrink that a little bit and copy it save ourselves a little bit of time and see if i can move this so if we want to imagine elimination taking place between the hydrogen and the bromine we have to rotate this newman projection we have to move the bromine into this position the chlorine into this position and the isopropyl group into this position, we have to get the bromine anticoplanar to the hydrogen. So I'm just going to erase and redraw so that all of our substituents are in the right spot. Now we have the bromine and the hydrogen anticoplanar. These two substituents are going to be on the same side these two substituents are going to be on the same side. Let's uh, draw these so we know that that alkane came from that Newman projection. And let's draw this Newman projection um, turning into an alkene. So first we have a methyl group and a chlorine. They're on the same side. They're on two different carbons, just like that. And then we have the ethyl group and the isopropyl group. They're going to be down here on this side. But again, be careful what goes where. So the isopropyl group is attached to the same carbon as the chlorine. The isopropyl group is attached to the same carbon as the chlorine. And the ethyl group is on the other. And then last but not least, we can go ahead and classify these two alkenes as E or Z. Here's our high priority. Here's our high priority. So this is a Z. And here's our high priority, here's our high priority, so this is an E. So this particular reaction makes a total of one, two, three, four different products.